meditation or yoga that you're able to just change how the world is occurring to you and through your perception you maybe are able to approach challenging times with a quality of gratitude so this is a week about thanksgiving and gratitude and i invite you to bring that into your practice today i also want to share that our sister nonprofit aim to empower that our community has created it's had the opportunity to participate in the extraordinary give on Friday. I'm grateful for all the people who came out, took part in it in some way or another, made donations. And I'm also really grateful that we're just able to make this available in our community. So for everybody who is a part of Aim to Empower in small ways and large, thank you for your efforts. I know that that work makes a big difference for the people who receive it. All right, let's get ready for our practice today. Come into child's pose. Get settled in a position that's comfortable in your body. So toes together, knees open. Good morning, Marianne. Arms forward and your forehead down to your mat. Take a deep breath in and exhale through your mouth and just let go as you exhale. Inhale and bring in your intentionality a quality of gratitude. And as you exhale, let go of anything that's not that. Build your slow, steady, deep, rhythmic breathing. Allow yourself through your breathing to be received by the group, group at home, group in the room, appreciated for what you're contributing to the practice right now. And there in your space, on your mat, Offer some gratitude to the group around you who will contribute to your practice this morning. On your next inhale, lift your body up into downward facing dog. Keep your breath flowing as you move into new poses. Good morning, Joyce. You can bend and straighten your knees. Start to stretch out the backs of your knees, the backs of your legs, your feet, your toes. And while you're breathing, let your gaze settle on one point at the back center of your mat. Breathe and take some time to feel how it is, how it seems in your body, and see if there are any extra movements that would feel good as you just start to slip into your skin right here. Couple more breaths. Be purposeful with your breathing. In the studio, you've got the assisting cards at your mat. If you don't have one, I'll bring one around. They say yes on one side, no on the other. You are welcome to switch them from yes to no at any point during the practice. If I sit one down for you, I'll sit it down with the no face up, and you'll just need to flip it if you are a yes at any point. One more breath here. Breathe out, look forward, and move up to the front of your mat. Once you arrive there, lift up halfway, and then hang down with your exhale. Fold your arms and sway from side to side. Breath by breath, pose by pose, we'll put our attention on just one thing at a time. Right now, you can open up your feet wide, heels maybe even wider than you would just do if you were moving your feet around, and get purposeful with your feet. All four corners of your feet, if they were a box on the floor, keep your breath flowing as you make any change in your physical structure. We get connected first in the practice to our own body. Press your feet down into the ground. Come rolling up to standing one bone at a time. Then stretch up, look up, reach up, and bring our hands into prayer position and pause. In every one of our lives, there has come a moment where we needed the support from another person. And for that, it's something to be grateful for. There are times that you give your support to another person, whether you even know it or not. So take a moment in your own mind to express gratitude for someone specifically, and then choose an intention for your practice. And my suggestion today is the intention of gratitude. Then three times we'll chant OM together. Deep breath in. Um. 
Inhale, reach up, fold to the floor as you exhale. Heels press down, inhale, lift up halfway, set your gaze. Now high plank to low plank, keep your eyes on that spot and lower. Inhale, lift, upward facing dog. Exhale, move back, downward facing dog. Breathe together, inhale, and a long steady exhale. Two more, deep breath in and a long steady breath out. Here's the last one. Inhale. On the exhale, get yourself ready, then move up to your hands. Inhale, lift halfway, and forward fold. Press your heels into the mat. Stand up and reach up. Extended mountain pose. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Inhale, halfway lift. Low plank on the exhale. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Three breaths. Be purposeful with your foundation. Maybe set your hands and your feet wide or create it so it's a little bit longer than it's already been. Last breath in this pose. Bend your knees when you exhale. Move up to your hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Let's really get moving with our breath. Inhale, stand. Fold to the floor as you exhale. Halfway lift. Move to the low plank and empty. Then inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three breaths, fill up, move the air out. Two more, fill up and empty. Last time, breathe in. Exhale, bend your knees, move to your hands. Halfway lift, forward fold. Inhale, stand, lift up, look up. Fold to the floor, empty all the breath out. Halfway lift, low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Spread your fingers out wide and sink the thumb side of your hand into the mat. Each one of your fingertips can connect to the ground like you're pawing a pillow. Last breath in, bend your knees and empty, then jump. Halfway lift, inhale and fold. Stand up, reach as high as you can, go back, fold to the floor and empty. Halfway lift, back long and flat, low plank, drop right down into it. Then inhale, upward facing dog, long neck, exhale, downward facing dog. With your hands connecting to the ground, you can tilt your sitting bones up and back. Lift your hips up and away from your hands. Empty your breath. Look forward. Move up to your hands. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Inhale, stand, lift, back bend. Fold to the floor. Halfway lift. Low plank. Empty. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Move breath to move energy now. Be really purposeful, steady, strong breath. Two more here. Last time, inhale. Exhale, bend your knees and jump. Halfway lift, fold down. Last time, now stand up, lift up, reach up, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, flat back, move to the low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Three breaths, long exhale. Two more, drag your hips up and back. Last one in, exhale, bend, jump forward. Halfway lift, forward fold, chair pose. Let's hold this for a few breaths. Get set into your heels and breathe. Move your hips back to the back of your mat. Then look down at your knees and see that they're standing right on top of your middle toe. Some they'll drop in, some they're turned out. Just line them up. 
on your next breath from your hip crease all the way up your sides to your armpits to your fingers you stretch then sit deep one more time inhale stretch fold to the floor as you exhale halfway lift low plank upward facing dog downward facing dog right foot forward and lunge arms overhead warrior one you breathe right here give yourself a few breaths to hold this pose you can drag your front knee forward while you sink the crease of that hip back once you have that all set up lift the pit of your belly all the way up to your chin and lift the sides of your body all the way up to your pinky fingers one more breath here then bring your hands to the floor low push up upward facing dog downward facing dog the left side step forward arms overhead lift up look up and reach we want to create a condition of your body feeling like it's melting that you lift and give it all the support it needs keep that and then the rest of it just melting melting into the shape create the shape of the pose keep on breathing lift up out of your low body stretch up for the ceiling one more breath you lift hands to the floor low push-up upward facing dog downward facing dog now stretch back let your hands melt into the floor and reach your hips up and back last breath in bend your knees look forward and jump halfway lift forward fold now we'll flow sit back inhale stretch your sides long fold to the floor halfway lift long side body here low plank upward facing dog lift long back neck downward facing dog right foot forward lunge anchor the back edge of your foot and reach hands to the floor low push up upward facing dog downward facing dog left foot forward lunge lift up look up reach hands to the floor low push up upward facing dog downward facing dog now lengthen out this pose lift your hips up right there see if you can become aware from your pinky fingers all the way up to your hips this lengthening one more breath in pull your hips up and back look forward jump to your hands halfway lift long body fold chair pose sit back lift your sides long fold to the floor halfway lift shoulders on your back chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog right foot forward lunge take a deep lunge so your whole body is getting warm reach up hands to the floor chaturanga upward facing dog downward facing dog left side step and lunge inhale lift hands to the floor chaturanga up dog downward facing dog work together with your breathing inhale and as you exhale just sink your heels down two more breathe in and exhale one more inhale exhale bend your knees and jump half lift long flat back fold heels into the ground chair pose stretch long fold to the floor halfway lift strong pit of the belly low plank keep it strong the whole way down upward facing dog downward facing dog right foot forward lunge inhale lift up look up stretch hands down chaturanga empty just pull your heels back upward facing dog downward facing dog left side step lunge lift breathe in hands down steady empty your breath till it's all gone upward dog downward facing dog deep deep breath in full breath out 
One more time, inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, move to your hands. Half lift, forward fold. Chair pose, sit, reach up, lift, fold to the floor. Halfway lift, low plank, drop down. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right foot forward, lunge until your thigh is parallel to the floor and lift up. Hands down, chaturanga, and up dog, down dog, left side next. Step, press your back foot in so you can rise up. Now hands down, stretch into this pose. Heel stretch back as you lower. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Inhale, let your head hang down, exhale. Two more. We're gonna take one more round of Sun B. So here's your last breath, bend your knees. Jump to your hands. Halfway lift, forward fold. Chair pose, set your feet wide, heels wide, and you sit, fold to the floor. Heels into the ground, half lift, chaturanga. Press your heels to the back room. Up dog, down dog, right foot forward. Anchor your whole back foot. You lift from the back foot and reach. Hands to the floor, low plank, slow and steady, empty. Up dog. Downward facing dog, left side step. Inhale, lift up, look up, chaturanga. Up dog, downward facing dog. Breathe and feel how it is in your body right now. How it seems, what you're working with, and then just be grateful for those opportunities and challenges. Raise your right leg into the air, bend your knee, heel to your hip, and flip the pose over. Two flat feet on the floor. Rather than any effort to say lift your hips higher, instead consider sinking your feet deeper. Breathe as you let all four corners of both of your feet sink down into the mat. And then a quality of hugging your knees together. If you have it in you to reach all the way over to the wheel, you're welcome to that if that suits your body this morning. Keep your breath flowing. One more breath. Side plank. Bring your right hand to the mat. Maybe your right forearm to the mat. Face the left side of the mat and stack your body up. There's so many variations to this pose. If you're on your forearm, an opportunity for you today is to dip your hips down to the floor and back up to the ceiling three times. Even if you're on your hand, you could dip your hips down and up. Last time, strong pit of the belly so you can float. High plank to low plank. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Let's take the left side leg in the air, bend your knee and flip it over. Two feet to the floor and you just keep breathing as you create the pose. Create that your feet are parallel, they're anchored into the ground. If you need to put your hips on the ground, make the pose a little less intense for you today, you do that. As you let your feet sink down, let your right hand sink down so that everything else is equal and opposite, a quality of getting lighter or rising up. Side plank, left hand on the mat, face the long right side of your mat. Even here, this pose asks that the pit of your belly is hugging in so that your body's free to be long and lean in the pose. If you're taking the three hip dips toward the floor, you can take those here. That's it, Caitlin. Two more if you've got them. Finish the last one for everyone. Strong pit of the belly, high plank to low. Lots of control. Inhale, upward facing dog, and move to downward facing dog. Now feel how it is for you. Maybe you need to dial down the intensity. Some dial it up, some you're just perfect right here. Step your right foot forward to crescent lunge. It's a strong straight back leg with your heels stacked on top of your toes. And though an opportunity is to put your bottom knee down, your back knee down, that's a choice. Then you can lift your arms up into the ceiling, stretch up and go back and bring your arms down to cactus arms. Let's warm up your upper back. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, just get really round. Tuck your chin and bring your forearms together. Inhale, open up thoracic spine into your chest. Exhale, round. Two more times. Imagine that you're melting, warming up your upper back. Last time, open up. 
Give yourself the rounding. Stay right here for a breath. Really give it a sigh. Then hands to the heart, chest up tall, and twist. Left elbow to your right knee. Get a little bit of warming up to your upper back. Once you get to establishing that your back heel, your left heel reaches back and the center of your chest is reaching forward to the front of your mat, then you can bring the same melting quality to your upper back, the area of your spine between your shoulder blades, your thoracic spine, melted into your body. While you're melting that in, move your arm bones onto the back of your body. Now for the next three breaths, you just stretch your side waist long. That's one, you have two more. Stay with it, just melt into the shape. Last one, stay with this. Reach to the crescent lunge. Open to warrior two, to the left. Get settled into your feet. There's no better way to calm down a high heart rate or a quick breathing pattern by, than, other than just melting your feet down. Then build your pose from your feet. Front knee, point it toward your toes. There you go. Back foot, you might angle your toes in, but really anchor it to the floor. And lunge down deep. Then stretch your arms apart and tilt for the extended side angle. See how this is for you and your body. You can continue melting your thoracic spine into your chest. Nice. Just a quality of settling in, thoracic spine melting. That's how you'll create the length down the right side of your torso, just melting. Feel the additional length in your right side body. That's it, Kristen. Now you can really press the back edge of your back foot into the mat and stretch your bottom arm if you're available to that. Reach the bottom arm or tuck it behind you. That's fine too. You got it. Open up your chest. Last breath, hands to the floor for Chaturanga. <coughs> up dog to downward facing dog. Left side, step forward, crescent lunge, arms overhead. Steady breathing. We're here not to do the poses just to get them done and kind of take care of a task on our list, but we're here instead to open up that our whole body feels alive. While you're here in this pose, identify one part of you in this crescent lunge that you would want to bring some new awareness to and put your attention there. Now to create your cactus arms. Take a breath in and open up across your chest. Exhale, pull your chest back in, tuck your head arms together. Inhale, open up. Exhale, just round. Inhale, open. You can feel your upper back stretching. Exhale, round. One more. Open. Tuck your chin round. Stay right here. Take a breath in. A sigh. Then drag your hands into heart center and twist. Right elbow to your left knee. Steady breathing. While you're taking this steady breathing, just melt your thoracic spine in. Arm bones on your back, especially the bottom arm. You'll feel it put extra pressure on your knee. When you get that extra pressure on your knee, you'll have an increased opportunity to make your right side back body long. That's it. Two more breaths. Really be in the pose and melt. You've got one more in the pose and melt. Crescent lunge, reach up, set your gaze. Warrior two. Open up. Perhaps take a sigh. Put your gaze on one point and manage your breathing. Warrior two. We always understand strong like earth, but sometimes we forget water is also strong. Strong like water means that while things are changing, you still have a quality of knowing where you are in that and an ability to adapt to the changing as it's occurring. Deep, deep lunge. Stay with it. Lift the pit of your belly. Stretch your arms open. Tilt for extended side angle. Deep lunge and keep your breath flowing. Bend your knees if you can until your thighs are parallel to the floor. I find that does a whole lot more to bring my back hip into the pose. You can take your arms and bind them if that works for you. And once you do that, lunge really deep. 
Oh, whoops, sorry. And then lift your chest as best you can. You got it. So you're gonna have to melt to do this. Melt your middle and upper back. You size, you're right there, Ryan. Good. One more breath. Hands to the floor for Chaturanga. Good work. <clears throat> Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. A sigh out. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees. Step or jump up to your hands. Then halfway lift. Forward fold. Chair pose. Sit back. Then hands to prayer, and we're twisting. Left elbow to your right knee. Keep your breath flowing, your knees evenly bending. You could take this to the squatting twist, where your heels are near your hips, your elbow is on the outside of your knee, and you're lifting your spine long and turning. From here, you could take it to a side crow, hands on the floor, maybe your hip on your back elbow or not, and then tilt forward. Wherever you are, we're taking three more breaths. That's it, Christy. Two more. Last one. Stay here. Now chair pose from wherever you are and forward fold. Open your feet hip width distance. Hook your big toes and stretch down. Take a sigh here and just let your spine hang long. The weight of your head, draw your spine down long. The whole thing just settled down. At first, I always notice the obvious things here, but what gets interesting to me is to start noticing how areas of my body that I don't typically become aware of, like the lower part of my mid-back, it also starts to open as I breathe. Now I crave that area being open. Long, long body. Release your toes, crow pose. You could begin with the goddess squat. So that would be knees wide, elbows between your knees. From there, you could set your hands wide, tilt forward onto your fingertips, or even from there, pick your feet up in the air. So crow pose or one of the preparatory poses toward crow pose. Take yourself where you find it suits you today. Three breaths. Two more. Last one, chaturanga, one leg back maybe at a time. Upward facing dog, that's it, Caitlin. Downward facing dog. Just one breath here and a breath out, then move up to your hands at the front of your mat. Halfway lift and fold, chair twist the other way. Sit back, bring your hands to prayer and twist. Bring your right elbow to your left knee. Double check that your two knees are evenly bending and then just sit back deep. While you're breathing, you can stretch the two sides of your body long. You can settle your thoracic spine into your chest. There you go. Arm bones on your back. Keep on breathing and lengthening your back right body. Two more breaths. Keep going long here, Angela. Last one. Chair pose, reach up, forward fold. Feet open wide, palms under your feet for gorilla pose. Just stand on your hands. You can shake your head out long. Let your whole body hang down long. See if you can let this pose happen by melting or giving way versus creating, asking for, adding to. Let it come by subtracting, subtract effort. Once you get it set up, subtract effort. Last breath, gotta squat, so squat down. Elbows between your knees, hands to prayer position. Your heels might not be able to stay on the floor today, that's okay, they might come up, you might sit on a block. Others, you're ready for more or what's next. From your goddess squat, put your hands on the ground again for the crow pose. Tilt forward. These are your handstand hands. So you're starting to practice your handstand hands here in the crow pose. 
in the crow pose, your upper back will have this quality of flaring open. If you could imagine like a cobra snake, how it flares open its hood. Now three breaths, strong press down with your hands, strong press together with your hands, two more. If you're upside down, you might be able to do one leg at a time for everyone, chaturanga. However you get there, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Take a breath, open up your mouth, sigh. One more time, inhale and exhale. Then look forward and step up to the front of your mat. Once you're there, lift halfway and stretch. Whole side body long, heels press into the ground, fold. Come up to standing arms overhead. Right side eagle pose, wrap your right arm under, your right leg over, eyes on one spot and breathe. Now get set up here, steady breathing. Eyes steady on the one spot. Now listen for it. Listen for the breath to be developed in the room. And you might need to be the leader, the one bringing breathing. We'll listen as though in the room here, we could hear everybody at home, that they could hear each of us breathing. Strong pit of the belly. And then just float, step out and switch sides, left arm under, left leg over. All at the pace of your breathing, where you are in your breath pattern. Once you get into the pose is an opportunity to just be there and feel how it is. What is there to be discovered about your experience in the pose right now? Let yourself get swept away in the present moment, in the experience of being alive in your skin. And then bring gratitude to the experience. Step out, right side, second set. Right arm under, right leg over. While you're standing, if you could imagine that your back is against a wall, the back of your pelvis, your bottom ribs, your shoulder blades, the back of your head. Keep all that, and then switch sides at your own pace. Just keep your breath flowing. Double check in with the pit of your belly. You might not have realized this, but that's actually the foundation in this pose. So draw the pit of your belly, the area at the front of your pelvis into your body. Lift it up towards your chin. See if you can experience that the whole of your spine is just getting stretched apart like a slinky being pulled open. One more breath here. And then step out. Hug your right knee into your chest, your left foot heel behind the middle toe, eyes on one spot. Stay in that fascination consumed by your practice. Then hold on to your foot, the big toe, the outer foot, or use a strap and extend your knee forward. Now, of course, you can always hold on to your knee, but there does need to come a day where you start holding your foot and extending. Get all of this extra opening in your right side back. Open your leg to the right. Look and reach to the left. You can let your standing foot settle down into the ground while the center of your chest lifts. And if you started concentrating so much you don't hear any more breathing coming from your mat, bring it back. Add breathing. It'll change your practice. Bring your leg forward, hug your knee into your chest. Then hands like they're shoved down into back pockets in the back of your jeans. Breathe in. And as you exhale, press your heel forward without leaning back. Inhale, bend your knee. Exhale, press your heel forward. Inhale, bend your knee. Exhale, press. One more time, bend and press. Keep it there. Take your arms overhead. Lift your toes as high as they'll go. Take a breath. Hands to prayer position, airplane pose. Open up behind you and keep on breathing. You can take your arm bones to the back of your body like they're moving up to the ceiling. And your thoracic spine, that middle of your upper back area, let that melt down into your body toward the floor. See if you can get this new sense of openness and freedom by allowing it to happen in your body. Now, before we leave, lift your back leg as high as it'll go. 
Hands pressed together in prayer position. Establish your grounding. Half moon, left arm down, right arm up. So before the pose right now, before being in it and breathing. Be really aware of your lifted legs. A lot of awareness about where your foot is. Bend your knee if you'd like. Catch your ankle. Stay with it, everyone. Five more breaths. Stay with it. You have it. Stay with it. Three more. Two more. Give one last breath in this pose today. Forward fold and hang. Now just let yourself sway from side to side. Just collect yourself. Take a side. Let go of anything that you're finding distracting, pulling your attention. Maybe you don't even know it's there. Let go. Come on up to standing. If you need a strap, grab it and hug your left knee into your chest. Stand tall. Whole body standing tall. Pull in the pit of your belly. Then hold on to your foot and extend your left knee, your left knee long. Holding your foot, your big toe, using a strap. Try to work on not pressing out, but collecting in. Little softness to both knees. Open your leg to the left. Look and reach to the right. Little softness to your knees. Can you have a quality of drawing in, hugging in? Bring your leg forward. Hug your knee into your chest. Hands go into your back pockets. Stand tall. Breathe in. Exhale. Press your heel forward. Inhale. Bend your knee and just soften this hip crease. Exhale. Press your heel forward. Bend your knee. Stand tall. Heel forward. One more time. Bend your knee. Heel forward. Keep your leg there. Arms overhead. Toes as high as they'll go. Stay right here. Toes as high as they'll go. One more breath. Bend your knee. Reach back to your airplane pose. Steady breathing. Right here, you can stretch both sides of your waist from your hip up into your armpit, into your ears long. And then melt the thoracic spine into your chest. Get to a place where the pose is really light for everyone. Shoulders to the ceiling, lifted leg to the ceiling. Even a little more than what you already are doing. Shoulders up. Hands to prayer position. Half moon. Right hand down to the block or floor. Left arm up toward the ceiling. Right here. You've got it right here. Let your whole body stretch open. If you'd like, you can bend your top knee. Catch your ankle for sugar cane pose. It's right there, Jen. So close. Three more breaths from wherever you are. That's it. Stay with it. two more. You've got it. Last one. Forward fold and hang. Sway from side to side. Now your body is ready for what's next. Come all the way up to standing. We'll take the standing bow. Right arm bone back. Forearm open. Hold your ankle from the inside. Left arm in the air. And start with your two knees together. Let this knee sink down while you stretch up through the sides of your body. So think about a bow and arrow, how when you draw the arrow through the bow, it has a lengthen and a ten uh, tension. Bre breathe in. Now exhale, draw the arrow across the bow. You're just stretching. So you can bring the quality of this stretch to the pose. Get to the edge of the pose where from the center, you're reaching out to the periphery. Your right shoulder, you can let that go behind you. You can even melt your thoracic spine into your chest, your arm bones. They'll go to the back of your body. Then drive one foot down and one foot up. Last breath, come out. <clears throat> Two feet on the floor, maybe hands to your hips. Get a breath and do the other side. Left arm bone back. Ensure that your arm bone has this back quality, form open. If you feel like your shoulder got crowded in front of you, let's switch your grip. Let's switch your grip here. Keep going one more time around. Not that way. Spin, spin. There. Feel the difference? Kick and reach. Kick straight back. 
and bring an equal but opposite, reaching forward to the kick. Breath flowing. Now drive your foot up to the ceiling as much as it'll go. It'll happen by letting go. Three more breaths here. A little giving up energy there. <laughs> Step out, feet on the floor. Maybe press your palms together or hands on your hips or on your thighs while you let your body settle. We have a second set. You can take it the same way you did this first set or use a strap to take it as a dancer's pose. If you're using the strap, bend your right knee and flex your foot so your foot occurs as kind of a hook. Then kick back a little bit and bring your elbows to your waist. The strap should feel really short and snug. I have to melt my upper back, have to melt my thoracic spine in, have to lengthen my side waist, and then I can drive my foot up and back. Elbows to the corners of the room, then hands together. Pick whichever version you're taking on. Take yourself to the edge of your pose. So you've got all the power in play in the pose. Now allow for the melting. Stay here for three more breaths. Two more breaths. Last one. Switch sides. If you need a moment to be just still, I usually do. Take that. Notice if you feel any kind of pinching quality in your low back. What we want a little more of is strong belly and stretching sides. You can help create that by pressing your foot into the ground. Second side, second set whichever version you're taking. Let your left arm bone be drawn behind you. That's it, Greg. Steady breathing. Steady breathing. Breath gets a little softer sounding here because the shape of the pose dictates that, but you can still have a really steady breath and your attention on it. Three more. That's it, Lena. Keep stretching and kicking it just like that. All right, step out. Feet on the floor, hands on your hips. Just step into your two feet. Let them sink into the ground. Perhaps take a sigh. We'll take tree pose. Left foot on the floor, right foot to your left inner thigh. You're still feeling a little bit high heart rate. Quick breath, press your palms together. Feeling like okay about those, but still want to be more settled? You reach. A little more grounded. Interlace your hands behind you and press them down. Switch sides, right foot down, left foot up. Right foot down, left foot up. And the pit of your belly and lift it up toward your chin so that the whole front of your hips and the front of your torso, it gets this longer, leaner quality. This sense of being stacked and supported. Reach. Come to the of your mat. All the way to the front. Then inhale, sweep your arms overhead, fold to the floor and exhale. Lift halfway. Take chaturanga on your exhale. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, right foot forward to triangle pose. Step, keep your breath flowing, build the pose from your feet up. <clears throat> Once you get your feet on the floor and your arms reaching, ensure that you can feel all four corners of your both feet on the ground. You're welcome to take a really long stride in a triangle pose. Put a lot of freedom in the foundation. This is oftentimes a pose where if you do give a little more attention to the pit of your belly, you'll feel a little melting quality in your lower back. Just another breath. Come on up to standing. Face the long left side of your mat. Lift your chest up high. Forward fold. All the way down into the fold. Walk your fingers in front of you. Fingertips on the ground and sink your hips behind your heels. Let the whole side of your body stretch once again. You might really feel it in your back, bottom ribs as you breathe in this pose, a quality of just opening up. Some of you are ready for an inversion while we're here. You could continue holding this pose. 
you could create a variation of this post. Sometimes I like reaching through my feet. Some of you will find it easy to put your head on the ground. Maybe you'll put your fingertips on the ground and take a headstand if that's something that's in your practice here. If you are going upside down, keep lifting in the pit of your belly and lengthening your side waist. <clears throat> Another breath. Come on up out of the pose. Turn to face the front of your mat. Standing single leg forward fold, or you can take a split on the ground with your right leg forward, arms behind your back. Bring your prayer hands together. Once they're together, you can nestle them up your back as high as they'll go and press your palms together. Then lift your chest up and fold. So much stretching for your outer forearm and even wrist when you put the prayer hands together behind your back. Keep some length between your feet so there's something to work with. If it's too close together, there won't be anything to grapple with in the pose. Learning how the weight from here to there impacts the whole of the pose. Especially if you've got the prayer hands behind your back, arm bones to your back, pit of the belly in, and then just melt your thoracic spine through your chest toward the floor. Twisting triangle, left fingertips right under your chin on the block or floor. Very little weight on your hand. You just make your body long and then start to twist. Open up to your right. A variation you could take is to step forward into reverse half moon. That just simply means lifting your back leg in this pose. If you've taken the reverse half moon, you just stretch long from the crown of your head to the sole of your lifted foot. For everyone, wherever you are in the pose, both sides of your waist long. One more inhale. Last chance, melt your thoracic spine and twist. Good, unwind, hands to the floor, take downward facing dog. <clears throat> if you're in all different poses, get there however you do, and then take the left side triangle, left foot forward. Steady breath, open up your arms. Once you get set in the shape of the pose, start choosing the bones of the pose. Press the knuckle of your front foot's big toe down. Sink the center of each heel down. And then once your feet are settling down into the mat like that, from there, you can lift up. A quality of from your arches to your pelvic floor to the pit of your belly to the crown of your head, lift up. Let this sink a little more and this get longer, all through your side waist longer. Come on up to standing, face the long right side of your mat, or long left side, sorry. Hands behind you, interlace your hands and lift your chest up high, forward fold, wide leg forward fold with your hands just bound behind your back. Bless you. Hands bound behind your back. Oftentimes when I'm taking this forward fold, I like to add a little bit of twist. So you especially want your hands more spilled overhead, which a lot of you have going on here. Then keep all of that shape, lengthen your chest toward the floor, and then just turn your attention and your chest toward one foot while your hands go the opposite way. So if I turn my chest toward my left foot and spill my hands toward my right, I keep the two sides of my body long, and then the other way. Come to the center and up to standing. Turn to face the front of your mat, standing single leg forward fold. Now your left leg forward, hands behind your back into prayer position. And you'll notice when you put your hands in prayer, probably there's a sense of letting your belly and ribs move forward. You just keep settling them back into your pinky fingers and fold. You'll feel extra pressure in your wrists and your fingers when you just bring the front of your body back into yourself. Steady breathing. <clears throat> Almost everybody would benefit by taking your arm bones onto your back. So instead of them rounding forward, they move to your back. 
and then melting right between your shoulder blades. Your, yes. As soon as Jen started melting her thoracic spine into her chest, the sides of her waist got longer. Can you make that happen in your body? Twisting triangle, right hand to the floor or reverse half moon. See if you cannot just lean your weight on your hand. Not shift your weight into your front leg unless you're going for the reverse half moon. Otherwise, anchor your back foot. Keep breathing. Thoracic spine into your chest. Sink that. There, and reach that. That's it. One more breath. Hands to the floor, downward facing dog. From here, come to a high plank position. Once you're in the high plank position, chest forward, look forward. Then breathe in, and as you exhale, sink your chest down. Your arm bones get taller. Then press your hands down, make your back round. You could always do this with your knees on the ground. 10 times, you press and get round, and then sink so your arm bones get tall. You'll have to keep the pit of your belly really strong to take 10 of these. You got it. Once you take the 10, stretch back to downward facing dog. Knees on the ground if you get a little tired toward the end of it. Pit of the belly up. Good. Stretch back to downward facing dog. You look like that's been enough no matter what it is. <laughs> take a stretch back here. Take a breath here. Come forward into your plank. Pull the pit of your belly in. Then inhale, lean forward into your fingertips. Exhale, press your heels back. So this isn't downward dog, it's just a plank, press back. Lean into your fingertips, press back, keep leaning, press back, one more, downward facing dog. Stretch, come to a high plank and lower to your belly on the mat. You can keep your toes turned under like they were for the push up. Reach your hands around behind you, press your heels and your hands back and lift your chest. Locust pose with your toes on the ground, heels pressing back. We're building for our back bends, looking for that our back body is so strong, side body so long, and then the opening will happen as it does. <clears throat> Come on down, relax down. Reach your arms in front of you. Flex your wrists so they seem like they're standing on an imaginary wall across the room from you. And you can hug your arm bones toward your ears. Tuck your chin and put your forehead on the ground. Point your toes. So press the tops of your feet into the mat. Then take a breath in. As you exhale, blow all the air out and draw the pit of your belly up into your body so your belly's not on the floor anymore. Feet press down, pit of the belly up. You got it. Feet press down, pit of the belly up. You're holding a handstand. Hold this for five breaths. Pit of the belly up into your body, four. Pit of the belly up into your body, three. You guys, a nice hollow body. Last one, relax. Relax, shake your hips from side to side. <clears throat> Bend your knees, reach back and hold your ankles. Arms back, hands back. Flex your feet. Kick back into your hands and up. Back and up. Knees only hip width distance. So try to keep those a little closer for some of you than what they are. Draw your feet back and draw them up. And then just breathe. Feel how it is to be in the pose and melt your upper back. And though breathe and expand your chest and upper back. Come on down, feet side to side. Take a second set or a second side, set it up and go. Hold back onto your feet, kick back and rise up. All the way back and rise up. Knees only hip width distance. That's it, Christy. See if you, Christy, at home and everybody here could just relax your outside ankle. I find that trickier than anything else. I almost have to look back and see if my outside ankle will become more malleable. Come on down. Feet side to side. 
Upward face dog. Put your hands on the floor beside your bottom ribs. Now take your arm bones back before you come up. You don't want to get up to the upward dog and see your shoulders out of the corner of your eyes. We want them to go back. You come through your arms. Upward dog. Downward facing dog. Good. Jump through your hands. Sit down. Roll onto your back. Prepare for bridge pose. Set up your first bridge. Ankles under your knees. Feet hip width distance. Feet hip width distance. Press down. Let your feet sink down into the ground. Lift your hips up. All the way up into your bridge. And once you're there with your feet anchored to the ground, don't move your feet. But bring your right knee into your chest. All the way in as far as it goes. And then see if you can reach your toes up to the ceiling. Reach them up like there's a button on the ceiling they're pressing into. And then hip dips three times. Toes push that button on the ceiling. One. Kiss the floor with your hips. Two. And three, knee into your chest, foot on your floor, and come on back down. Knees side to side. <clears throat> Let's do the second set. Press down into your feet, rise up. Keep your feet set steady and wide. Now bring your left knee into your chest. Both knees hug into the center line, particularly that knee of the foot on the floor. Identify the spot on the ceiling that you're going for touching with your big toe. That's it. Now sink your hips. Kiss the ground with your hips. Touch the big toe to that button in the ceiling. Do that three times. One, two, three. Knee into your chest. Foot on the floor and come on down. Knees side to side. All right. Next bridge pose. Set it up and go. And then once you're in the bridge, we're going to set up the wheel pose. So hands get set wide. So they're as wide as your mat and deep underneath of your shoulders as much as possible. Get ready to melt your upper back. Press your hands and the feet into the mat and come up. Melt your upper back the whole way up. Whatever that would mean, feel like, or be to you, you breathe and let your upper back melt. <clears throat> For most of you, you could stand to open your just your heels a little wider. Tuck your chin and come on down. Knee side to side. Okay. Let's get ready for the next one. We're going to do a few of these. We're going to hold them for a few breaths. We don't always hold. So let's give ourselves some hold time here. Bridge pose first. Set your hands ready for the wheel pose. Get all the way up into the pose. Get very aware of breathing, sharing your breath, and hearing the breath support from the people around you. Ten breaths. Nine breaths. Let your thumbs sink into the mat. Eight breaths. Seven. Relax in the pose. Six, five, four, three, upper back melt, two, one. Come on down, knee side to side. Now, can you feel the heat in your upper back? We're working for that. We're trying to build that up and use it. Next one. If you're feeling pinching in your low back, maybe put some blocks under each hand or each foot. Don't press so high. Next one, bridge or wheel. Set it up. Hands, feet on the floor. All the way up there. Open your heels wider for many of you. And then we start to breathe. That's it, Christy. Breathe 10. Steady, relaxed breathing. Nine. Press your big toes down into the ground. Keep on going. You have this. It's just five more. Upper back mount. Maybe you can do some shoulder rolls in the pose. Stay with it. Last breath. Tuck your chin and come on down. Knees side to side. Now get connected with how it is in your body right now. If there's pinching in your lower back, there's something different to do in the next one. You can still be in the pose, but you got to do it differently. Set your feet wide, as wide as your mat. Come up into the bridge. Set your hands as wide as the mat. Press down, rise up. You got it. See if you could tippy toe and even walk your hands in a little closer to your feet. Keep the breath moving. Fill the pose with new energy. Keep letting go of the old with your exhales. Stay for five. You've got it. Four, three, two. Tuck your chin and come on down. Supta Baddha Konasana. Soles together. Knees open. Check in with how it is in your body how the practice in life seems to you right now. It doesn't mean that's how it is, but it is how it seems to you. Get acquainted with that. And then take a breath in and let all of that go.
Keep your feet hugging in this diamond shape like you've got created and lift them off the ground so they're hovering. And then curl up and hands like they're clapping. Interlace your fingers, release your index fingers and cross your thumb. And then just like aim for your big toes. Breathe in, blow out and reach for your big toes. Keep on going 10 times. It'll be a little movement. Nine, go eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax down and stretch out. Then hug your knees into your chest. Legs straight up in the air. If you have two blocks, hug one between your ankles. Take your second block and squeeze it like you're going to crush it. Palm to palm, right between your palms at the center of your chest. And you focus on pressing that together. Now, take a breath. And as you exhale, sink your belly down so you feel every single bone of your lower back from your last rib all the way to your tailbone on the floor. Inhale. Exhale, lower your legs a little bit and squeeze the block at your chest. Breathe in, lower a little more. If your back is starting to arch, you're a little too low. If there's more space, lower it a little more. Hold this. Breathe five, four, squeeze the block. Three, two, one. Legs back up. Hug them into your chest. Relax for a second. We're doing that two more times. Get ready. Legs in the air. If you've got the extra block, hug it between your ankles. You'll want it a pretty long distance between your ankles. So make it a little longer if it's narrow. Try your block a little longer. Squeeze. And if you don't have a block to squeeze, press your knuckles together. Curl up. Hug or press your knuckles or the block. Inhale. Exhale. Lower your legs a little bit. Keep your belly sinking deep. You might be as far as you need to go. Lower a little more, but keep sinking your belly. One more. If there's a little more, lower it. Hold it there and breathe. Keep pressing and sinking. Inhale, blow out, legs up. Hug your knees into your chest. How's that going? How's it going at home? Good, Nicole? Good, Christy? They're giving thumbs up. They want to do one more. Last one. You're getting that? Like, it's so hard. And when it gets hard, you go to your back and it starts arching. We don't want the arching. Just don't go that low. Legs up in the air. Hug your block. Whether you're pressing your knuckles together, you're pressing your palms together, establish so much collecting energy. Inhale, exhale, lower a little bit. Head up if you can. Breathe in, sink your belly, maybe lower. Check in with your lower back. Inhale, you don't have to lower any lower. You could just sustain. Hold it wherever you are. Breathe five, four, belly in, sink it, especially low belly. Two, one, legs up. That's so good. Let's take some bicycles to just work it out. So shins parallel to the floor, fingertips behind your ears, curl up, and then you go side to side. Right elbow, left knee, left elbow, right knee. Stay curled up. See if you can keep the pit of your belly on the floor the whole time for this one. That's a little tricky with these legs coming and going like they are. Keep on going for 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Use your breath, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, real slow, 5, 4, 3, 2, really touch your elbow, last one, touch it, stretch out long. So good to stretch, isn't it? Hug your knees. Rock head to tail several times up into a sitting position. Once you are sitting tall, you can let your feet just be about hip width distance in front of you and turn and face your right leg. If you find it difficult to sit up on your sitting bones here, put a block under your hips and let your knees be bent. And then hands on either side of your right leg. You can work um, with pointed toes at first. And then we're taking 10 little lifts. 10, 9, see if you can lift it, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Switch to the other side. Now, if you feel like you're back on the squish, the flesh of your hips, do what you can to get sitting up. Bent knees might help you out. Sitting on a block might help you out. Point your toes and sit as tall as you can. And the left side, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, slide your feet in, bent knees, 
sit, let your head drop around like a seated newborn pose. Get a little cramped there, Ashley. <laughs> Just let yourself rest for a second. <clears throat> we have one more. <laughs> You're all looking at me so hopeful. <laughs> So this time you can let your feet go a little bit wider and put your hands in between. You'll want to have your hips elevated, many of you. You want to get a sense of kind of leaning forward. Ready? Got your fingertips on the ground, shoulders back. Now you're lifting with the pit of your belly and your hip flexors and your quads. Lift. 10, 9, 8. Try. <laughs> that was okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> Take another. Uh, <laughs> no, not coming. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just lift them. <laughs> it's not it's not easy okay <laughs> let's move on from here where are we where are we okay let's move on let's take ourselves back to downward facing dog an upward dog if you just swing your legs around and lift that'll probably feel good on all those spots you just worked <clears throat> it's tricky to tap into your really deep core it's not always something that we've really used consciously or we have, but only in a couple of ways, and there are a multitude of other ways. Right side pigeon pose. Now, to give some extra stretch to the body part we just used, whether you want to block under your, many of you will need a block under your right hip. Knee straight in front of you, shin at any angle, reach back with your left hand, catch your left ankle. You might stay sitting up today. Some of you might fold forward, whatever works for you the beginning of a king pigeon pose. Feel a stretch in your back hip, leg that just did those funny little leg lifts for you. And then downward facing dog, we'll take the other side. Left leg forward. On the block, if that's the right place for you. Right hand back to your right ankle. Now I like to hold, if I can, from the inside, if that's possible. It just gives me the opportunity to push my leg into its more true north alignment. So ankle out. There you go. Inside knee has an in quality. You probably won't really access that feeling. If you can, lift the pit of your belly so that your body doesn't sink into your lower back. There's a lifting, long, lean feeling. Good. That's it, Christy. Keep lifting the pit of your belly. If your left hand can go on your thigh or a block, you might have a little more leverage to lift up from, just like that. Sit your left hip then on the ground, and we'll do double pigeon, so your left leg can be the bottom leg, your right leg the top leg. Hips elevated works for a lot of people on a folded up blanket, mat, small block. And then if there's a knee hanging in the air, put a block under it. Some, it'll seem more like crisscross applesauce. Others, your ankle will hang off of your thigh to the side, but everybody should flex their feet. If you can, move your hips behind you. And if folding is available, take that. You might even be able to press into the soles of your feet with your forearms usually works really nicely. Now, don't force your body in this pose in any way. Your knees should be allowed to take the pose on as um, it works for your knees. You could put emphasis on just lifting out of your lower back. I always find that this is one of the sections of the sequence where my ability to tap into gratitude is much easier. I'm grateful that my body could do the things it did. Switch sides. I'm grateful for the amount of health I have and the lessons from the amount of health that I think I don't have. So grateful that there's a space I can come to to practice where other people are beside me on their mats, at home on their mats, doing their best to be up to their biggest self this day. 
I'm grateful for the creativity as I look around the room and see how each person has wrapped their own body around the concept of this particular pose. I love our practice that encourages people to take a deep inner listening and from there, and what's important to them, express their practice that day. Okay, seated wide, leg forward fold. You can sit up, open your feet really wide, legs long. Sit up on your sitting bones and move them behind you if you can, or sit on the block. And for all of us, we're looking to make our body long on the sides and then hinge forward. So the hinging is from the sitting bones to the crown of your head. It's always those two points that we're stretching apart. Maybe what you really can become aware of is from your sitting bones to your heels, those two points stretching apart. Every pose just has its own geometry to it. And when you start to see the shapes that you're making from that perspective, sometimes it gives you new access to understanding the shape in your body. What kind of length are you able to create on your side torso here? Keep your right leg long, bend your left leg, turn to face your long right leg for a seated single leg extension, left hand to your right baby toe. Right hand wherever it suits. I like taking my right hand around behind my back. It's one of my favorite poses. You know, it's taken the entire practice to get to this point. And it's one of my favorite places because typically tight spaces in my body that I generally can't really even feel until they hurt. I just don't feel them in a regular way. I get access to that here. All the work I've done trying to melt my upper back, lengthen my sides, breathe into my back bottom ribs, all that work culminates into a really feeling of healthiness in this pose sometimes. Switch sides. What's available for you? Set yourself up for a winter time of well-being this year. Let your ankle melt. Get yourself set up into a regular pattern of practice. Pre-sign up for classes so you know these days, this time, you show up to yourself, to your mat, and take care of yourself. I think a season of gratitude can be a really incredible time to set that kind of a goal where I'm going to put in place the practices that keep me living in the space of gratitude. I don't know about you, but I can feel like I'm in that and let go of the patterns and habits. And all of a sudden, I'm not in a great space, and I wonder how I got there. Sit up, two legs in front of you, seated, forward fold. Toes point to the ceiling, sitting bones behind you. Stretch up and hinge forward. That's it. Whole body long. Just keep lifting. You may need some softness. You can press into my forearms and then lift. Keep pressing with your arms like you're chopping and lift. Yeah, like that. Reverse plank. If you have a block, hug it between your shins. Then lean back on your hands, fingers pointing towards your feet. That will be the awkward hand positioning. Move your shoulders back, press your hands, let them sink into the mat, and lift your hips to the ceiling. See if you can put your flat feet on the floor in front of you. This will take some allowing. Yes, some pressing down with your hands, but allowing your body to rise up. Breathe. Stay with it. Hands sink, chest lifts. You can drop your head back if that's what's comfortable for you. Two more breaths in this pose. One more. Maybe you'll take it as a sigh. And then sit down. We'll take fish pose. Lately, I've been liking a very active fish. Hands in a C shape, each around one side of your pelvis form on the ground. <clears throat> Activate that your feet are pressing away from you. Your hands are pressing the bottom of your pelvis towards your heels. Then sink your elbows into the mat and lift your chest to the ceiling and let it open. So this fish pose, your butt is on the ground, your head is supported, and you stretch your sides long. So no sense of sinking. 
you're lifting and stretching length into the pose, an opening in your chest. While you're here, just breathe and expand in your chest and in your upper back. Tuck your chin and roll onto your flat back. Once you're on your flat back, you can roll your feet overhead to plow pose. Now, of course, this is a time that you could also be practicing a different inversion. Just be really aware of the people around you. You could take plow pose to shoulder stand. You could take a waterfall pose where you're just flat on your back. Your legs are straight up in the air. You could take a handstand, a headstand, forearm balance. <clears throat> Pick the pose that gives you access to a feeling of rejuvenation. A pose that you can get into and hold on to. Greg, nice. And even in the work, you are able to stay very present, a calm, steady breath, sense of being right here for the pose in your skin, in your breathing. Take 10 more breaths in this pose. When you finish the 10th breath, Come to the finishing pose for the one that you've been doing. So it could be that you need to come to child's pose. Could be that you are in plow to the deaf yogi pose. Ultimately, come rolling out, just slowly putting your spine down one bone at a time. So you can have a quality of stretching it out and resting it down. When you get to the point where you feel like your whole body's on the mat, hug your knees into your chest. You can drop your knees over to the left. Look to the right if that's available. And once you get into your simple twist, take a breath in. Open up your mouth and sigh and let your body just melt. Then switch sides. Other direction. So knees to the right, look to the left. And take a breath and sigh. Supta Baddha Konasana, on your back, soles of your feet together, knees open. In the studio, you do have a cold eye towel near your head. <clears throat> In your Supta Baddha Konasana pose, while you're letting your bones settle into the ground, soon to be prepared for a deep rest. In your mind, Get present to who, what you're grateful for today. And in some way, include yourself in that assessment. And if you come across a who, 
bring that person to mind. Imagine the love that is behind expressing gratitude. Imagine that you are sending that into them, filling them up with appreciation. Then stretch your legs out long and wide for deep rest, Shavasana. <clears throat> Gratitude is at the core of Thanksgiving. I have a poem that I found for you about Thanksgiving. It's by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. We walk on starry fields of white and do not see the daisies. For blessings common in our sight, we rarely offer praises. We sigh for some supreme delight to crown our lives with splendor and quite ignore our daily store of pleasures sweet and tender. Our cares are bold and push their way upon our thought and feeling. They hang about us all the day, our time from pleasure stealing. So unobtrusive many a joy, we pass by and forget it. But worry strives to our lives and conquers if we let it. There's not a day in all the year, but holds some hidden pleasure. And looking back, joys oft appear to brim the past's wide measure. But blessings are like friends I hold, who love and labor near us. We ought to raise our notes of praise while living hearts can hear us. Fool many a blessing Wears the guise of worry or of trouble. Far seeing is the soul and wise who knows the mask is double. But he who has the faith and strength to thank his God for sorrow has found a joy without alloy to gladden every morrow. We ought to make the moment's notes of happy, glad thanksgiving the hours and days a silent phrase of music we are living. And so the theme should swell and grow as weeks and months pass over us and rise sublime at this good time. A grand Thanksgiving chorus.
Begin to deepen your breathing. <clears throat> Move your fingers and your toes around, perhaps roll your head from side to side. And then hug your knees into your chest. Roll to your side. With your eyes closed, bring yourself up into a sitting position. Arrange it so you're comfortable and you can sit tall. Inhale and sweep your arms overhead. Lift up. Exhale, bring your hands into prayer position. We'll create a sea of three ohms to complete our practice. That means we'll start together and you take each one as they come. Don't worry about if others are chanting at the same pace as you. Deep breath in. Ah. Ah. knuckles to the center of your forehead and inhale. Exhale. Namaste. Good work. Thank you all for being here today. I appreciate you and your uh, membership and each day that you come when you bring your friends. I look forward to meeting some of your family later this weekend. We have a modified schedule on Thanksgiving, so make sure you look ahead and see what the schedule is, but there is a class. And then also all day on Black Friday, you can be looking online for some different sales on teacher training, annual memberships, and a few other things. So if you've got any of that in your mind, that's a great day to look at those. Have a great rest of your day. Bye there at home. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. If you are staying for our perfect Sunday morning, the restorative class after this class, just take everything out so we can clean the room up, and we'll bring you back in once it's clean. Thank you. <laughs>